And back again at day 92. And man, did I ever run that other one short. Uh, <laughs> I was so busy talking, I actually recorded audio like a minute and a half beyond when the video ended. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> I was just like, there was more to say. Like, I, I just, I realized I did a whole lot of like nagging on Final C8, but didn't really mention any of its really good qualities, um, which were, um, I totally lost track of what I was thinking. It was just like the, uh, the design of the game, like in general, like, I really loved the, the way the game was put together as far as, the word I'm looking for, like, um, the environment was very well designed, the feel, the musical score, the artistic element of the game was very well designed, and despite having a really shitty story and extremely shallow characters, like, I would say the characters in Final Fantasy, uh, 8 were even more shallow than the characters in Policy, uh, 7, as far as actual character development goes. Which is unfortunate, um, because if you would like to see... That's too high. You'd like to see more character development always in an RPG. Like, that's that's kind of what makes the game, is, is being able to relate, to fill the role of that character. That's why they're role-playing games. I mean, if you can't fill the role of that character, you're not really getting the experience. And, uh, that kind of sucks. Because the experience matters. That's, that's one of the most important parts of everything. Anyway, uh, out from Final Fantasy VIII, um, we now move to the lovely Final Fantasy IX. Uh, and ah, Final Fantasy IX it is indeed. Um, IX was... A breath of fresh air. It was something totally different in comparison to Final Fantasy VIII or, you know, Final Fantasy VII because it was a return to roots is the way they like to describe it. Uh, it's where they call it, you know, bringing back what made Final Fantasy Final Fantasy. And... Anyways, it is, yeah, yeah, okay, um, I'm distracted by, uh, things. Final Fantasy IX was, had that more traditional RPG feel, like, it felt like your, you know, traditional Japanese-made RPG, in that it more greatly emphasize the fantasy feeling you expect from a Final Fantasy, from any kind of RPG, really. Like, we don't go into RPGs expecting, you know, spaceships and, you know, modernization. You, you're expecting fantasy, which is just not necessarily the right thing, I think, to expect with, um, with a, uh, an RPG, really, because it's, it's a role-playing game. It could be any type of role. It shouldn't be limited to specifics of medieval or fantasy or whatever. It should really be about the characters, which I think um, there's the, uh, the rather famous... Um, what's it called? Uh... Um, Persona, which is uh, a modern day RPG, like it takes place during modern times. Uh, I haven't had a chance to play any of the Persona games, and I wish, I really wish I had had the chance to play it. And that block should be there. There we go. I knew something looked funny. There we go. That should be right. Right. Let's go grab that block. I need that every last little bit. Anyways, Final Fantasy IX was 
a very hands-on game by the guy that I call the father of Final Fantasy, uh, Hinorobu Sakaguchi. And I know I went into him a bit before on um, one of the previous videos when I talked about the rise and fall of, of Squaresoft. And he was really, you know, hands-on with this game. And it was very much his brainchild. Because it, I said because he was also the guy that was very hands-on with Final Fantasy, seven, uh, Final Fantasy uh, seven, six and five. And he was like, you know, the big honcho guy in those uh, storylines. And it really makes the difference because you can feel his touch on the game. In addition to being your normal, already entertaining Final Fantasy experience, Final Fantasy IX brought back that... It was, I would call it the, the heart of fantasy in the Final Fantasy line. Because it had that traditional medieval feel, but it did it in the Final Fantasy way. In that it, it brought the extreme and the unusual and the magnificent into a video game. Which is what you would really like in an RPG. I think most people want that. They want the the unique, the awesome, the new, and the interesting. And you don't get that in a lot of the other... Like, each Final Fantasy has its own little thing. But 9 recaptured what made Final Fantasy Final Fantasy to start with. And uh, I didn't understand this when I played Final Fantasy 9 the first time. Because when I got to 9, I had never played... 5 or 6 or any of those others and so I didn't know what old school Final Fantasy was like uh, I looked into it but I would never actually played any of it and so I wasn't sure what to expect with, uh, with Final Fantasy 9 uh, and I didn't really I'll admit it at the time Final Fantasy IX was my least favorite of all the Final Fantasies. And I say that because I had gotten so used to the to the modernization that was in 8 and 7 that it kind of felt weird to take that step backwards. Like, it was almost as if they were, like, dumbing down, I would say, the... Uh, what would you call it? The... The, the, my mind is like totally blank. I should really write down words before I start talking. <laughs> the, uh, the development of the people in the, in the game. I should put it that way. It's like there was no development. Like it didn't seem like they progressed at all because you didn't have, everything seemed so medieval and it was so foreign to what I had previously experienced with the Final Fantasy game. So it really took me a long time to develop a proper appreciation for what Final Fantasy IX really was and what it did well. And I kind of regret that. Like, I wish I had known the first time around what a gem I had come across. Because like 7 and 8, it wasn't fantastic. It wasn't phenomenal. It was not be-all, end-all. It was not a super amazing RPG. But it was a really good Final Fantasy. And I say that because, despite the whole weird, Zidane is just a, you know, one of many monkeys from some alternate reality bullshit thing, for the most part, the story is very believable and interesting in Final Fantasy uh, IX. Like, um, you know, the, the evil of Queen Brane and, or I think it's what her name was, anyways, and the weird circumstances of uh, Dagger and her being a summoner lost from her mother uh, at the beginning of the story, like they show the little cutscene. And you don't really put two and two together right away then, but you to realize that she was from the summoner tribe and all that other stuff. But it's just, it sort of, it flew, it flew, it flowed a little more smoothly 
the, the way the plot went from one thing to another to another and progressed throughout the story made more sense in 9 than it did in 7 and 8. Like, it was just a more believable story. Like, it made more sense in that regard. And I like that. It was something special. And that's why I like to call it something special. That's why I like to think of it as the best of the three of the PlayStation era RPGs. Uh, it didn't necessarily have the best gameplay. It didn't necessarily have the most well thought out battle system, but it had the best story. And for me, an RPG is its story. Without the story, there is no RPG. I mean, you can I consider some non-RPGs to be RPGs because of their story. I mean, I think that might be a little, you know, back asswards for some people. But it's, or ass, you know what I'm saying, back asswards to some people. And, uh, Bass Ackwards. That's what I'm supposed to be saying. Bass, I thought it sounded wrong. I'm like, what? Bass Ackwards. And, um, I know it, it seems, uh, wrong sometimes to some people because of it, but, like, a game that's just, like, even stupid fetch quest type games, I, uh, I found more interesting than, um, some other RPG simply because there was enough story to go along with it to make it compelling. And that makes a difference for me, because I, I, I enjoy the idea of having an interactive novel. When I play an RPG, that's what I set out for. I want the story. And 9 gave me the story. It was it was brilliant. There was, you know, the character was kind of, the main character was a little lovable, and he had a bit of a secret unknown past, and it just, it worked well in the traditional RPG sense. Uh, I mean, it was full of cliches, but it still fit, you know? It wasn't forced. It just sort of did what RPGs are supposed to do. And I, I, I can appreciate that as a gamer. Because you just don't get that often enough out of today's RPGs. That, that feeling that they just went that extra mile, made the difference... And I like the, the um, I like the uh, the feeling that story came first, and they sort of evolved everything else around the story instead of the feeling that they came up with like a concept for a system or a a gameplay mechanic, and then built a game around that. So it's just it, it matters. So nine was was that game for me. It was that. Wow, this is interesting game for me, and uh, I love the character design, the uh, the lovable monkey boy, and the uh, and I loved the emotion that came from um, what was her name, the Lancer's character, uh, the rat person, had some of the deepest. 2D emotion I think I've ever experienced in an RPG. Like, her character was just so believable and understandable. And I really appreciated that. Because it, they put a lot of depth in her her love and devotion to both her country and her countrymen and the, the, and, and the other Lancer that she had these affections. Her tutor mentor thing that just sort of went on. It was, it was just, it was fun. And uh, I liked it. I liked it a lot. And uh, it's, fun, it's funny that of all my uh, must-play RPGs, that no Final Fantasy makes the list, despite how great and grand they all are in their way, they don't make the list. They're just not good enough. Like, they're great, but they didn't, you know, become something fantastic. They didn't rise above and be exceptional, I should say. They just weren't exceptional enough for me. And I love exceptional. Exceptional is something else. Suppose we talk about Final Fantasy IX, and I might go on all sorts of tangents. Um, the battle system of IX was... 
well, basic, I think is the best way to put it. It was very basic. It did what you expect a battle system to do. You know, it, it provided the role, and you got XP, and everything functioned. <clears throat> but it didn't, you know, stand out. It didn't say, oh, that was interesting, or that was awesome. I don't think I like what I just did there. Uh, I'll have to friggin' change that. Eh, it's not gonna work. I don't know, I, the, um... I liked the class system in 9. I liked how your characters all had their sort of role. You know, like Steiner was your your your, you know, your magic sword knight, and Zidane was the thief, and you know, Vivi played his his touching role as the uh, the unsuspecting prototype mage that somehow had a soul when none of the others seemed to. And it was it was great. I mean, because it allowed that level of customization in battle like you would specifically try to take in the characters you needed for some battles or you would learn which characters to bring at least on multiple play on repeat playthroughs anyways and it was kind of interesting um, it was a shame that uh, because they were both the same from the same group that Emiko and Dagger ended up sharing their roles like it was you know they were the the summoner girls, and while Dagger had more curative spells and Imiko was just pure summoner, it still sort of felt off, because, like, Dagger was, you know, white mage slash summoner, whereas Imiko was just, like, pure summoner, and it just seemed like they should have left one as a pure white mage and one as the other, and I think they should have kept it that way, because I don't think the way they had it is the best method for it. But it still it still functioned and the game went very nicely. Thankfully you didn't have Dagger the whole game. <laughs> that sounds kind of weird. But uh because she wasn't always that great. It's like aside from being curing, she was like the only but our only use. Uh I she was useless in battle. I preferred um the, the blue mage, Quina, actually, honestly, when it came to healing in battle, because he was more adaptable because of his range of spells. He could do so many different things, and he still had enough power, if you got the right weapon for him, anyways, he had enough power to be a really useful melee as well, and that, that's, you know, just that one extra mile to make things a little better, so... I liked him. I usually had him and Vivi and Steiner a lot of times because Steiner could uh, combine with Vivi to do the magic sword attacks. Uh, Zidane was nice and powerful and interesting and all, but he wasn't really one of the best characters to have. I think you could not have him. Am I thinking of another Final Fantasy? I believe you could not use Zidane, right? I might be mistaken. I haven't played these games in ages, so if I say something that makes absolutely no sense, that'll be why. I'm pretty sure you didn't have to use him 24 7 like, He wasn't like Cloud. And I think Final Fantasy VIII was that way too. You could, didn't have to use Squall all the time. But, uh, I can't remember for absolute certainty. I really should play those again. I wish I still owned them. But, like Sakodin, I sold them in a moment of desperation. <laughs> and I don't have them anymore. I really wish I did, but I don't. If I ever get a uh, PSP or something, I'll download them and play them all again. If that day ever comes. Um, I don't know, Nine, uh, I think one of the more interesting characters in Nine was actually the, uh, the monk slash ninja type character, Emma, Emma, Rat, Emma, Emmet, or whatever his name was, the uh, the big red-headed haired dude that was supposed to be a ninja, I think. And uh, he had this uh, 
really broken move uh, called Chakra, or Chakra, yeah, it was Chakra, and uh, it restored like HP and MP, and it was funny because it took like, you know, so much MP to use, but then it would restore HP and MP to the whole party, including himself. So like you got what you used back, and then, uh, you know, and then some for the rest of the party. And it was, uh, the major optional boss that was in that game called Ozma. I would have never been able to beat had it not been for that ability that he had. Because that thing was just, like, crazy brutal. Of all the optional bosses I've ever played in Final Fantasy, number single-player Final Fantasies, that was definitely the most challenging. Uh, even outside of Final Fantasy VIII's, Final Fantasy VIII's Omega, which was, like, crazy difficult also. I required to have played all of the card game to get the special items to beat him. So it's just you know, something extreme. Very extreme. Extreme! Um, <laughs> yeah. But 9, I like 9. It had good atmosphere, the flow was good, the story was good. The characters were believable, they fit their roles, they, they were stereotypical and cliche, but they fit their roles way better and they had better motivation than uh, the characters in the other series. And it was much more realistic, their reasons for their actions seemed to have more emphasis and more importance. They weren't just sort of forced or tacked on, or, oh, I'm going to be a material hunter, or... You know, I'm going to randomly love some dude I've never met before, ever, and who treats me like shit. <laughs> you know, it's, just, it's a little more understandable. Their characters have, you know, I wish they had explored the relationship between Zidane and the, uh, and the, um, what's it called, the, uh, the Lancer character. What was that girl's name? Uh, I wish they explored the relationship between their characters a little more because it felt a shame that it wasn't uh, more explored. Like, it was just sort of forced along. Uh, they, I, there was supposed to be some history between them, but you don't ever get to really know what it is. And that kind of sucks because it seemed like there was a lot of potential plot that they didn't get into there. Or at least backstory or something. Uh, the build's coming along, as you can see. I'm on the third level, I think, here now. I'm not really keeping track. Like I said, I record all the audio after I uh, actually film it. So, like, I filmed this, like, three days ago. I don't remember what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> it was, it was, it was exhausting. That's all I remember. Uh, I don't know, I've, I've recorded the last three episodes here, or narrated the last three episodes here back to back. And, uh, I'm getting a little winded, and my mouth is getting a little dry. Here I was talking about all the Final Fantasies that were fun and influenced my uh, early PlayStation life. So, But this video is drawing to a close, so I will say goodbye, and I will see you with episode 26, which will be out probably the day after tomorrow, because I'm lazy. <laughs> goodbye.